First of all, I wanted to thank you uh, for coming here. I have to say that after five years of YouTube talking to a few people, or a lot of people, like Amir, like Miko, and there are many more here, I have to say that I had the chance to meet them in real life, and I also met extraordinary people here, so this is kind of a very inspiring event, uh, especially for me, because I didn't expect... Uh, I mean, it, it was really amazing to see all these people so passionate about language learning, and not only about language learning. So, I thank you dearly for coming, and so numerous. Uh, now, <clears throat> today's presentation is going to be about making languages work for you. I wanted to start with a kind of a romantic note. Um, and, you know, I think that love and passion are very important in life. I wanted to show you two simple pictures. The one on the left is my grandmother, and the one on the right is my grandfather. They met almost 100 years ago, and I have to say that these two are and have been uh, the inspiration for me. They, in my house, there were tons of books uh, of every field, every possible field, and they were. She was a math teacher in high school, and uh, my grandpa was a rational mechanics professor at university. But their passion was not just about mathematics, it was about everything. It was a passion and a thirst for knowledge. And the amazing thing, uh, when I say that love is everything, is that they passed not only uh, their knowledge, but they passed the, the thirst for knowledge to their sons. And some 30 years later, my brother was born, here on the left, <laughs> father. and my sister, me and my sister, I joined them a little bit later. Wow. <laughs> Sometime, somebody said that my father looks a little bit like me. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> now, um, the, the reason why I'm talking about the fact that they were inspiring figures is that um, they seeded something important in me. When I, in, uh, in the summer, my grandmother, she uh, took me aside, I was nine years old, and she told me, you know, you're going to high school, uh, sorry, you're going to middle school very soon, why not study, for example, Latin and French? You can imagine that in the summer you want to go playing with your brothers and sisters, you want to go uh, swimming in the sea, etc. But, you know, I was reluctant a little bit first, but then I gave it a try. And I have to say that these lessons, just one hour a day, they changed my way of seeing things, and I was nine. Now, <clears throat> like every other Italian student at middle school, uh, I tried to study English, and I also tried to study uh, French, but um, I hadn't fallen in love with the languages because the system at school, you know, we normally don't get in love with languages, you don't fall in love with languages. Uh, my, mm, my parents decided to hire a private tutor of English um, at the age of uh, 12. And um, what happened is that these two, I call them the Hardy Boys series, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple book. What happened is that um, my aunt, who also loves languages, and she, she is a wonderful polyglot as well, uh, she gave me this book, uh, well, one of the books here, The Tower Treasure. It was a very, very simple book. But the thing that struck me is that immediately after, you know, leafing through the book, I really wanted to understand every single word of this book. I remember looking up every single word. I don't know why, but it had spawned some kind of linguistic monster in me, and I, had <laughs> and I wanted to learn English so bad that my parents decided to hire as I said, private tutor, and her name is Susan, she is from Chicago. I have to say she was also another inspiring person because she loved what she was doing. She loved teaching, she loved conveying knowledge. And um, after uh, middle school, I tried to learn German. I remember I saw a dusty book, a uh, grammar book, and I tried to figure out, uh, you know, uh, the grammar, uh, German grammar, it was kind of difficult uh, at the beginning because I was doing it the wrong way and I didn't know what didn't work for me. So I tried and I tried and then all of a sudden um, I 
found out the, I would call it the Luca method, I don't know how to call it, it's my method. Um, before showing you what I do, uh, I would like to say that for me, uh, I, after some 32 years, I just believe, and I'm certain of this, that there is no best language path. There is just your language path. Um, here, in physics, normally, when you are at point A and you want to go to point B, there are many possible paths that you can follow. Um, I would like to say that if you consider the number of people who speak a lot of languages, uh, we have all learned languages differently. I don't think uh, any, nobody has learned language the same way as the other person. Um, so this is kind of proof that for me, there's no best language, the best language method that people are looking for. What is the best method? This is one of the most asked questions ever. So. Um, what I believe, and these are very two very simple steps, you have to find your own language path. You have to find, find out what you like, and you have to do something each day, because that's the best way to feed your brain and to give it knowledge. Now, um, I call it the Luca method, but I also call it the full circle method. The reason why I call, I call it the full circle method is it, that it consists of two steps. <coughs> When you're dealing with uh, a foreign language, you immediately are com you're immediately confronted with something totally new that you don't understand. So you have to try to figure out um, what the language, how the language works. Now, it might sound uh, a little bit trivial, but the thing is that you, I believe that in order to learn uh, well, you have to make certain that you understand what you're learning. It might sound very trivial, but some people, for example, they tell me, uh, look, I've been learning uh, Spanish for three days, I don't understand the radio. I said, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the reason why you don't understand the radio is simply because uh, language, you know, connected speech or speaking, uh, language is a flow. So if you don't uh, see the boundaries of words, uh, you cannot understand it. It takes time to do that. So I think that it's something progressive, and you have to make certain that you understand what you're doing all the time. Some people just try start learning a language and then they really don't understand uh, what they're reading or what they're listening. So I always try to make sure to have, for example, bilingual text so that I can understand not only you know the language that I'm trying to figure out, but I, I use uh, my L1, I would say, my mother tongue as a crutch to understand how the other language works. But um, some people say that listening and reading um, are key uh, to language learning. I, I believe that. I believe that's the first step. But I also believe that you have to do something else in order to ingrain the language in you. So what I do uh, normally, I don't start speaking from day one, but I start uh, you know, elaborating the information in a certain way, and I call it synthesis. So every piece of information is first analyzed and then synthesized, so to say. And this is a way to build a foundation and learning how to settle the pieces. Now, um, here on the y-axis you got the efficiency, and here is time. As you can see, uh, once again, I want to stress the fact that this is not universal. This is my way of learning languages. There are some people who immediately start learning a language. For example, they go to a country and they try to learn as much as they can, you know, spending many hours. I, I don't do that. Uh, what I do in the beginner phase is I kind of learn slowly. It means that every day in order to, you know, there's, there's a very important thing uh, that really counts is the fact that a lot of people, you know, you're all passionate about languages. So for you it's not a problem, but for a lot of people burning out and giving up because they say, well, I can't do that, you know, it's too difficult, is a serious risk. And the reason why this is a serious risk is because a lot of people try to learn too much. They spend three, four hours trying because they want to do it and they believe that the more you do something, the more you get good at it, it's true, but at the beginning, your brain necessarily needs some time to gestate. You know, you need some time to ingrain to get the language in it. And it takes time. There's nothing else. There's no way. There's no shortcut. Uh, 